Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 to 2. This morning, I will be speaking on, uh, we are in the series on dealing with uncertainties. I'll be sharing on unmasking, unmasking uncertainties. Amen. Unmasking. We are all wearing all kind of masks. Amen. All kind of shields. We will unmask the mask. Amen. So we're sharing on what? Unmasking uncertainties. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. The message translation. It says, since God has so generously let us in on what he's doing. You know God is doing some great things now in the world. Amen. God has led us into these great things that he's doing. He has led us into COVID-19. We are in it. Amen. For over seven months now. God allowed us to come into it. Amen. Since God has generously let us in in on what is doing we are not about to throw up our hands and walk off the job just because we run into occasional hard times these are occasional hard times amen it's for a moment say it's for a moment amen okay we refuse to wear masks Hallelujah. There are marks in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. From, from, from the days of, uh, of, uh, of the Bible, people you know, begin to uh, fight against marks. Hallelujah. Amen. We refuse to what? We refuse to wear masks and play games. But this one is another contest, but we'll get it right. We don't maneuver and manipulate behind the scenes. And we don't twist God's word, but suit, no, we don't twist God's words to suit ourselves. Rather, we keep everything we do and say out in the open the old fruits on display so that those who want to can see and judge for themselves in the presence of God. Now, verses. Three onward to six. We we'll stop at six. There are about six. If our message is obscure to anyone, it is not because we are holding back in any way. No, it's because these other people are looking or going the wrong way and refuse to give it serious attention. Hallelujah. Amen. If the church is so strict on what we should do as for the times are, it's not because others that are free are right. The church just wants to be right. Amen. Are you getting it? The church just wants to obey the law of the land. It's not because the, 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 the pops, they are dancing all over the place in two clock together. And you think that it, it, they are right. And the church is wrong. No, the church just want to obey the laws of the land. Are you following me now? Is that making some sense to us? If our message is obscure to anyone, it's not because we are holding back in any way. No, it's because these other people are looking or, or going the wrong way and refuse to give it serious attention. All they have, all they have eyes. All they have eyes for is the fashionable God of darkness. They think he can give them what they want and that they won't have to bother believing the truth they can't see. They are stone blind to the day spring brightness of the message that shines with Christ who gives us the best picture of God we will ever get. Christ always obeyed the law. Hallelujah. Give to Caesar. They needed something. They said, okay, go. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Go down to the river. Get a fish. And pay the tax. Hallelujah. Verse 6 to 7. 5 to, five to 6 will end. 5 to 6. 
Remember, our message is not about ourselves. Our message is what? It's not about ourselves. We are proclaiming Jesus Christ, the Master. All we are is messengers, errant runners from Jesus for you. Now, the final verse we'll read, verse 6. Amen. It started when God said, light up the darkness and our lives and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ. All bright and beautiful. Last week we shared on four types of problems. Though we mentioned five types of problems. We mentioned that the first problem was simple problems. There are simple problems. Number two, we mentioned that there are complicated problems. With number three, we mentioned that there are what? Complex problems. Go with me. Number four, we mentioned that there are what? Chaotic problems. And we mentioned one that we didn't go into, and that is what there are obvious problems. Some problems are simple. It depends on your faith. You make it so big because you've magnified the problems so that you have what? made your God small. But they are basically, as a child of God, they are simple problems. Amen? And as we make sure that are complicated problems, these are conglomerates of simple problems, so many simple problems. Before, they, before you can know yourself, they become, the whole issue has become complicated. But they ought to be simple problems. But you've allowed the old scenario to become complicated because you've allowed one, allowed two, allowed three. Before you know it, the center cannot hold. Things fall apart. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world, if you know the writer. Now, there are complex problems, problems that are very complex. And we got to the chaotic, and we said the complex problems has to do with what? Has to do with the human being. Human beings are complex, fearfully, even God fearfully and wonderfully craft them. You know human beings are the most complex things on earth. You don't know? Of course you know that you are very, you are complexly made, some versions put it that way, that you are complexly what? Made. Amen. That we came to the chaotic problems. Everything in this array. And the obvious ones are when you see a problem. You see someone, you just know that that is the problem. Just seeing the person. There's a name they give to it. Those medical doctors say there's a way that you just see somebody, you know that there's a problem. You've known the problem by just seeing the person. You enter a nation, everything is what chaotic, obvious, and all that nonsense. Okay, quickly. So to this morning, we are looking at unmasking uncertainties. What does it mean to unmask? Unmask is to expose the true character of a thing. The hidden truth, to expose the, the hidden truth. Unmask, you want to, you want a revelation, the revealing, the true identity of something. Unmasking uncertainties. When you encounter a problem, don't just Panic and no, get to know the truth. That's why medical, medical science, they do diagnosis. They want to know the truth of why this manifestation. They go through all the tests. They want to reveal, they want to unmask the problem before they deal with it. Unmasking is also a term in the, the intelligence community for my knowledge background of security studies. It's a term in the intelligence community and it's used to refer to revealing the true identity of someone. You have spies coming to nations and you, in intelligence, science, you unmask the person. Hallelujah. And unmasking is legal. It's also, it's legal. You want to know why. That's why when you enter a country, you come into a country, they want to unmask you. They want to know who you are before you go through the borders. 
all that security checks, they want to, they are unmasking you. You go through the immigration. They take your passport. They scan it. They want to unmask you. They, they, and they want to mash it up with all the data they have in their social security system, their NII system. With that, they want their unmasking. They want to know who you are, why you are standing there, going through the computer system to unmask you so that who you claim that you are is truly you. Amen. Are you following me now? Unmasking on certain things. Hallelujah. I hope I can work with my gadget again today. So what do you do during uncertainties? And we want to unmask it. How do you unmask it? And what do you do? Number one, quickly, for our time, trust God when it doesn't make sense. When things doesn't make sense, trust God. Hallelujah. God is a patient God. So don't rush. Don't run out of him. Run away from him. Rather, it's the time to know God more. Trust him that if God presents a situation, brings upon you a situation, then go to God and know what this is all about. With that, you can be able to unmask the uncertainty, the problem. Because in every problem, there is something. There may be opportunities in the problem. Trust God to, to inform you why the problem. God is patient. is there waiting for you to come back to him. Demonstrate a perfect trust in him. That the God that allowed it is able to take care of it. Perfect trust. I wrote a poem on chapter, title Shattered Trust some years ago, presented to a world group in Austria, the European Peace University. Shattered Trust. And uh, it was, the poem was just a poem that I wrote in part of an exercise. But somehow, you no. Know, that pressure that trust was presented as an Easter present to a president in 2001. It describes an uncertainty about the people, about the situation, an environment that things are not the way they are. There is no more trust. Trust has been shattered, like we saw in this season in the in, in nations. Business cannot trust government. Government cannot trust business. Sports cannot be trusted. And everything, trust has been shattered. If you know one great journalist, Naomi Klein. Naomi Klein is a Canadian. No, she's, she's an environmental journalist. She wrote the book on no logo, no logo, no logo. And she talked about shattered trust in some form. How talk about no logo, no space, no jobs, no choice. As she won uh, a big award prize on that book, No Logo. I'm teaching you environmental science now without you paying for it. Amen. But you can check it out. Now McLean, no logo. So Isaiah 55 verse 8. God is saying, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. God's ways are not, the way we take things, that's not the way God is. Amen. By this time we know, we know that. Amen. We are panicking that there is no God. God is saying, I'm here. I am here. I have got something big in the midst of all this. I am in this situation. I'm still my God. I, I am God. Malachi 3 verse 8. I am God. I change it not. Amen. God is saying, I'm still God. I don't, I'm the same. Hebrews 13 8. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am still God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the God. 
He changed it. No, he's God. He's, he's alive. He's still our God. He's still awesome. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's still our God. He's still, in the, he's still with us in all this. Hallelujah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. You know, God walks in the midst of unthinkable hearts. God works in the midst of unthinkable situations. Israelites encountered a Red Sea. And God is saying, come, what do you have? All you have, Moses said, is a rod. With that rod is big enough to deliver my people. Thank God for the tanks, the military tanks, the Pharaoh is coming with. But the rod you have is more than enough to take care of the situation. Amen. Perfect trust. He's saying, have perfect trust in what I've provided for you. Amen. You know, the, more, the more the days are coming and going, the more I'm beginning to enjoy or understand or you know, trust this God. Amen. The more the days, at some point, I just sometimes I just even get tired of all the situations, all the things that people do. I just I said, but I have a God. There is a God. Hallelujah. So the God that has kept you is still God. No, he's still your father. He changed not. Trust him. The more have perfect trust in him. The way we do things are not the way he does things. I, I came out, I, 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 I was reading and, and I said, okay, this is good for, for this message. I said, let your native fear be replaced by digital faith. Amen. Let your what? Native fear be replaced by what? Digital faith. Now we can, all we have, some people are at home and they are still enjoying what? The message. Amen. They can't make it to social, uh, you know, they can't make it to church and they are still at home. And they are confident that with the digitization, they will, they will still have the best of the service. With the internet, they can what? Have the best of the... Let your native fear be replaced with what? Digital faith. Just like you have faith on the internet, your iPad, your iPhone, whatever. Have faith in your God. And these are man-made inventions. And we have so much faith in it. As long as, okay, I was, what I was led to as an example was, you are traveling and you forgot your materials for an important interview. You've worked on your laptop and somehow, somehow you must have carried, you, I mean, you couldn't get your laptop, your, your particular item or whatever you needed. And you asked, will there be internet in that place I'm going to? Yes. And that is it. It's sorted. I'm sorted. As long as there's internet, what? I am what? Sorted. Once I have connectivity there, I can get what I want and continue with my exercise of the day. And that is what digital faith. You can quote me. Amen. All you need is digital faith. God is a good God. But now notice, trusting God can be scary because you to give up your control. Trusting God can be scary. You have to give up your control. And God may be doing the work in a way that feels unsettling. Sometimes you will be so unbalanced that how can this be? For the students, how can I go through education in this era, first year in university, and they are saying you know, two, three days online, two, three days face to face, and blended learning, and all the phrases that they are using now. How can all this be? But there is a God. Amen. If you allowed it, then He will see you through. Hallelujah. So, that is perfect trust. Like Job. All Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know there is a God. Job 19, 
25 through 27. It says, For I know that my Redeemer lives. The New King James Version. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the head. We know in all this that our God lives, and God will stand at last on the earth. Amen. Not one something that is given all kinds of names. God will be the God of the earth at last. Hallelujah. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, how my heart yearns within me. God can be fully trusted. Hallelujah. God can be fully what? Trusted. He's perfect. He loves you with a perfect love and will never do anything that is not in your best interest. God will never do anything that is not in your best interest. He will never. What you face right now may not make sense to you, but it makes sense to God. Amen? It makes sense to God. It makes sense to God. There are some journeys that you ought not to have made that you've been making all over, but now God is saying, stay put. Hallelujah. Stay in one place. Just yesterday, I was amazed about the different things that, that I have to do in a short time. Someone said, do something for me in South Africa. Preach for me in South Africa. I said, all right. How many minutes? This minute. Someone called me yesterday again. Do something for me for Black History Month. Okay. Just today. How many minutes? This is it. Someone said, do something for me in London for a global meeting. How many minutes? This, that. And all is just so jam-packed. But with God, with the times, it's all doable. Amen. Ordinarily, it wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Hallelujah. It doesn't make sense to us, but with God, I said, God is saying these are the days of opportunities. Hallelujah. It may not make sense to you, but it makes sense what? To God. So therefore, what do you do? Entrust it all to him and watch him walk. Let him do something for you. Let him make the best out of it for you. Number two, quickly, number two. So number one, what did I say? Trust God when it doesn't make sense. Number two, in your masking, rebrand. Say rebrand. Now you can see that I'm bringing in my MBA senses now. <laughs> Re what? Rebrand. Rebrand. What is rebranding? Rebrand means the pro changing the corporate image of an organization. So, in the midst of uncertainties, rebrand. You have to change. We are all changing our ways of life, isn't it? We can't even shake. Have a good handshake again. Some people use elbow. It is well. For some of us, we don't even shake at all. Stay where you are. Stay where I am. Smile, I smile. Wave, by wave. It is well. You have to what? Rebrand. Rebranding is a market strategy. For what? For giving a new name, a new symbol, a change in design. For an already established brand. And why do we rebrand? We rebrand, the idea behind rebranding is to create a different identity for a brand from the competitors in the marketplace. So, as we are, as a people, for us, for us to unmask this uncertainty, the time that we are in, we need to rebrand. We need to what? Rebrand. Galatians six seventeen. From now on, let no one trouble me. Galatians six seventeen. From now on, let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I carry Jesus. 
Let no one, let nothing trouble me. I have, been, I have rebranded you. There was an uncertainty. I too have rebranded. I carry a new name, a greater name. Now look at the, another version of that, if I can get it. The New American Standard Bible of Galatians 6.17. From now on, let no one cause trouble, including COVID-19. Let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. I've been, I've, I'm a child of God. I've been rebranded. I bear in my body the brand marks. I'm a new product. You are a new product. You carry a new logo, a new symbol, a new name. Hallelujah. You have rebranded. The world is rebranded with COVID-19. You too, you have rebranded. You, in short, you were rebranded before the world is being rebranded. Hallelujah. Amen. So from now on, let no one trouble me. Let COVID-19 trouble. Don't come near me. I'm, I carry a new logo, a new symbol, a new identity. Hallelujah. You dare not. You compete with me, I will flow you. Hallelujah. That's why companies rebrand. When they have a competitor, they rebrand. Mm. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5 17. That you know, you know it. Second Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. You are new. You are new. Hallelujah. Say, I'm new. Now, 1 Corinthians 9, 18 to 23. For though I am free, Paul writing, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew that I might be Jews to those who are under the law as under the law that I might win those who are under the law. 21. To those who are without the law as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ that I might win those who are without law. Not 22. To the weak I became I might win the weak I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. 23. Now on this I do for the God's sake that I might be partaker of it with you. Hallelujah. That means I can adapt to every situation. Amen. You can adapt to this situation in the name of Jesus. You can adapt and survive. Paul is saying that I can survive any situation that comes my way, any situation, any uncertainty, I'm able to adapt to it and get through and still work for my God, make my Jesus known. That should be you. Just like businesses rebrand to survive. When, there is, when the whole atmosphere of the, of the market is chaotic, then they rebrand to survive in that era. So also you, by rebranding, you will survive in this era. Paul is saying, I can survive in any situation. Acts 4, verse 12 says, Nor is there salvation any other, for there is no one, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus is the only way. The truth, the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, he said in John 14, 6. I will conclude by going to the third point. Be confident. Unfailing faith. Unfailing faith. Demonstrate unfailing faith. Be confident by demonstrating unfailing faith. If you must unmask the era, the season that we are in. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. God's word never changed. God cannot violate his word. God cannot what? Violate 
his word changeth not. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him are men to the glory of God through us. Hallelujah. God's promises are yes and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Has God promised you good? Yes. He said you shall be the head and not the tail. Above only. He said the righteous, we read it this morning, that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. It's the promise of God and God cannot take back his promise. Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. As he said, and will he not do it? Or as he spoken, and will he not make it good? Not just saying it, he will make it good. Hallelujah. That means in the midst of all this, you will be standing. We, we, we are going through and we are looking at some, some businesses that, that we are losing out, that are losing out in this season, like Primax. Amen. You know that you hear the news. No online facilities. Meanwhile, the Asdas and the Tesco's, we are making it in their billions. Tesco, you don't, they, they were even far ahead with the scanning machine. Where they don't need to touch anybody. All they need, you go, you get the scanner. You can get your products without even what. And that made them to be far ahead. No delivery service and all that, all that, all that. And those that had it were ahead. They were, they were branded far ahead of others. You will rebrand. Amen. You will rebrand and you survive the season. And make the best use of the season. In the, na in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one will lose out. No, none of you will lose out. No one of us will lose out in this season. Amen. No one of us will go bankrupt. Hallelujah. No, no one of us will lose your... your you, you will not lose that in all fronts, financially, in all fronts. Your job, you will not. Because you will be so needed. You will be so needed. Even in this season, you will be so needed. Hallelujah. You will be so needed. You will upgrade. Hallelujah. Say, I will upgrade. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the era for you to make yourself unique. Amen. Because they are looking for those that matter. You will rebrand yourself in a way that when they are looking for one, you are the only one qualified. Because you have rebranded and you suit what they who and what they require you know that position for who they, who they want for that position. So go ahead and thank God this morning and appreciate Him. Give Him all praise and give Him all glory. Give Him all adoration and King of Kings. Oh yes, appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Thank Him. Hallelujah. 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 We've had the word this morning. Trust God when it doesn't make sense. Trust Him even when it doesn't make sense. Like Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Why not decree and declare in one prayer? Say, Lord, I'm making a decree. Make a decree. I know that you live. Therefore, even in all this, I will come out shining in the name of Jesus. I will come out testifying. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, a particular song that is coming to me is, I don't know whether anyone can help me. Amen. God is a good God. That's why we need to rebrand. Amen. Oh, Lord, have your way. You know the song that, that is coming to me? I don't know where we can sing it, but you know it. It's the song by those. No? <laughs> Hallelujah. Son, spirit to spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what I hear anyone. Can do it. Father to child. Hallelujah. Spirit to spirit. By your word. Come, just go ahead and just appreciate him. Your bread, Read your bread of life. Hallelujah. 
this word and you want to know how to unmask your problems the times the challenges that you are in the starting point is to come to Jesus the starting point to be able to go through all this is to come to Jesus therefore pray this prayer with me say Lord Jesus I come to you I'm a sinner I confess have mercy on me wash away my sins with your precious blood I know you died for me I accept you as my Lord, Master and personal Savior write my name in the book of life give me the grace to walk with you hallelujah you pray that prayer please you are now a child of God just touch with us through our YouTube channel through our Facebook our email just get in touch with us and walk with you hallelujah 